Hello, we are still at flow measurement. This time we are talking about the flow, float flow measurement. Float flow measurement. How is this working? Float flow measurement, there is a tube, it's a tube, it's always a tube, and this is there's a cone, a slight cone in this tube. It's a little bit too too big, this hmm? cone. Then there is a float. Yeah? This float has somehow a special form. Special form looking it has some special form usually, yeah. Some special form and it has a mass M. This mass means it will be pulled down the gravity force Fg. Yeah? If now the liquid starts to flow in this direction, yeah. That's the, the liquid, liquid flow. Yeah. Then there is a force also from the liquid because it has to pass this float here on the side. Yeah. It has to pass here, so there is friction so on, and this float will start to rise. See? There's a scale here, there's a scale, scale start to rise and because it's conic yeah, it will get easier for the liquid gas liquid to pass so this means the force of the liquid will drop and this means the more flow there is the more this float will rise and then there is equal force in this direction this direction it will stop yeah. This means the position of the float is indicating the flow rate. And this is what we want to measure. Okay? Float flow measurement. Very, very easy. Very easy thing. Advantage, of course, advantage, it's easy. Easy and cheap. Does not need external power. External power. Does not need external power. Of course, we have again a pressure drop. That's for sure. Yeah, that's the, that's the disadvantage. Yeah. Indication. On spot indication already built in. Yeah. Does not influence by some conductivity. Uh, also for small for small flows. Accurate. Accurate accuracy is again 0 0.6 to 2 percent yeah, around this. Yeah. So it's not too accurate, but also accurate for small flows. Last time we had we were discussing about this differential pressure where small flows was a problem. Here small flows are no not a problem. It's equally accurate, but it's still also at small flows accurate, yeah. And it can be repeated several times, will stay the same. So accurate. On the other hand, yeah, disadvantage, the form, I said there's a special form and so on, and there is this needs to be adapted to the liquid. Yeah? So there is uh this must calibrate it, calibrate it to fluid, calibrate it to the used fluid. Yeah. And if this is like this, yeah, you have to mount it really 90 degree, yeah, 90 degree. 
because if you mount it the wrong way, there will be friction on the side. Yeah. So, but however, they are also spring loaded. Spring loaded things, they work then in different ways. Yeah. They work then also if you put them horizontally, not just vertically, they also work horizontally. You have to check the data sheet if this is possible, if this is spring loaded or not. Yeah. They also then would be also be possible to have here some switch, yeah. Inductive switch, capacitive switch, and everything this is passing. Uh, this is switched yeah, to maybe to watch if there is enough cooling water or whatever running through and if this is going down the switch will switch and tells okay there is not enough cooling liquid cooling liquid flow for instance yeah. so this is float flow measurement very easy measurement but reliable next time we will get to know an, another another method of flow measurement. Uh, this is the next time we will talk about a little more sophisticated approach. Okay. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.